Two here with you, and we are driving to Brownwood, Texas to go see a massive baseball collection. We're going to be looking at game used bats, autograph bats, autograph baseballs, and vintage baseball cards. We're excited to get out and see this man's collection, and we'll get there in a little bit and check them out. All right, here we are rolling through a collection we're looking at. What do you want for the Sosa bat? Texas, where we're gonna go through a recap of our trip that we took yesterday and what we picked up from uh, Brownwood, Texas in the collection that we saw. I'm going to try to do this, you know, kind of quickly and to where, you know, this video doesn't get crazy long, but we did get kind of some nice stuff. Um, first thing I'm going to show you is, again, I picked up a bunch of vintage cards that were just sitting in his collection. This is a 1960 Kansas City Athletics team card. Um, pretty cool. Picked that up. Um, we've got this 1961. Hobie Landreth, he was born in Decatur, he was born in Decatur, Illinois, had a 14-year major league career. Um, he had a batting average, career average of uh, 203. So we got this nice, are they in pretty good shape too? Some, most of these are in pretty good shape. You'll love, love the centering on this next one. I wonder what it would grade out. This next one again is a, another 1961 Mo Thatcher, born in Louisville, Kentucky, he had a five-year major league career, batted 177. That's not going to get it done. But look at the centering on that baby, huh? Almost missed. Almost missed that. And then we're going to come up here. We got actually a 1961 rookie card. Jerry Adair, born in Sand Springs, Oklahoma, had a 13-year major league career, batted 258. Uh, played for the Played for the Red Sox in 1967 and 1968. Um, again, had an average of 258s, and he did amass a thousand hits in his career. So, you know, pretty nice uh, Jerry Adair rookie card. We've got another another rookie card we pulled up here, and again another 1961 Don Notabart, born in uh, West Newton, Massachusetts. So he's a he's a mass guy just like myself. Uh, Mr. Notabart pitched nine years, had a 3.65 ERA, went 36 and 51, uh, had 525 strikeouts and 283 walks. So again, um, nine-year career, pretty cool. And I actually picked up uh, two of these. So if if you have an interest in this uh, rookie card, 1961 rookie card, give me a comment below. Maybe we can work something out. Um, got another. 1961 Jack Stanford um, from Westlake Hills, Massachusetts, had a 12-year career, 3.69 ERA, 137 victories to 101 defeats. He had 1,182 strikeouts and 737 walks. Um, pretty, pretty decent major league career for Mr. Stanford. And then in here, I've got a bunch of cards. I'm going to rip through these pretty quick. Of course, I picked up this nice Hall of Famer, Mike Schmidt. Mike Schmidt card here. Uh, Mike Schmidt, of course, Hall of Fame, 1995. Member of the 500 Home Run Clubs. Had 10 Gold Gloves, 6 Silver Slugger Awards, MVP of the league in 1980, 81, and 86. So pretty cool to pick that up. Um, got this Campaneris. Pretty cool. Another all-star card from the National League, uh, Ron Santos, for you Cub fans. This 1968 strikeout leaders. Another 1968 pitching leaders. It's 1970 Reds. Again, if anybody has any interest, this is a Rick, nice, nice Rick Wise here. Anybody has any interest in these cards? Nice Campaneris here. 72s here. 1972 Vita Blue. Old Vita, I remember watching him play. 
Um, A's All-Stars. Of course, you got Camp and Harrison here and Sal Bando. Mr. Sal Bando picked up this little insert card, Pete Rose. AL home run leaders, and of course we got Reggie Jackson in here, George Scott, and Mayberry. Put these rookie all stars in here, 1972 vintage cards, pretty cool, pretty cool. Got a pretty good deal on all these. Again, I think I gave a little, I would average a little over a buck a card, so. Didn't do too bad, 71. I kind of just picked all these out. Got this Hernandez. Another 72 All-Star rookie card. And got this nice Raphael Palmero. And then picked up. He had a little ink there. Picked this up. Wonder how well this, this Elvis Andrews is have to go. We'll have to figure out a home for that. And then I'm going to go on to my Red Sox hits that I picked up. Again, got some nice, nice vintage cards for the Red Sox. Here we got a 1958 Pete Rummels, born in Lufkin, Texas. Had a 14-year career, batted 291, Had 1,854 hits. He played for the Red Sox from 1958 to 1962. His best years were with the Red Sox, where he led the league in, in batting average with a 320 average in 1960 and had a 326 batting average and led the league in 1962, the year I was born. So there you have it. All right, picked up this 1961 Gary Geyer. Again, Sand, Sand Ridge, Illinois is where he's from. Born, 12 year career, batted 246. Amassed 633 hits in that 12-year career. And we got this 1961 Chet Nichols, born in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, home of the Pawtucket Red Sox, AAA. Don't know if they were there in 61, but that's where he's from. He's a lefty, had a 3.64 career uh, ERA, went 34 and 36, 266 strikeouts, 280 wins. We got this 1963 uh, Jack Lembay, Farming, Farmingdale, New York is where he's from. He was a righty. He had a 4.24 career ERA, went 33 and 41, 443 Ks and 238 walks. So there you have it. And picked up this Jim Longboard. Jim, Jim was born in uh, Santa Maria, California, had a 3.86 career ERA, went 157 and 137, had 1,475 Ks, 823 walks, played for the Sox in 1965 to 1971, um, had 264 strikeouts in 1967 to lead the league, had 368 saves, um, led the league in 1939 with 39 saves. Um, again, really nice, really nice pickup. And then I'm going to kind of go through these. We're going to get into some 70s cards. we got Sparky Lyle here, um, his 1970 tops. And Sparky Lyle, of course, was with the Sox for a few years and then got traded off. Probably the best of his career, he was traded off to the Evil Empire where he won two World Series with the Yankees. Really nice pickup here. All-Star American League, All-Star first baseman, Ken Harrelson. Ken Hawk Harrelson, who just retired this year, is um, as the announcer for the uh, Chicago White Sox, loved listening to him do games. Saw, listened to a lot of White Sox games back in the in the '80s when there wasn't a whole lot on, but TBN and you get Cubs, and I'd get some White Sox and some Braves. But you can put it on the board, yeah. Hawk Harrelson got a nice 1970 dual Canigliaro and Averro. Got a 1971 with Griffin and Montgomery. Pretty cool. Pretty cool to pick up all these older cards that you haven't seen in a while. Players that bring back some memories. Some Mike Andrews, second baseman for the Red Sox. We got another Jim Longboard here. That would be right before he left. This is pretty cool. One of my favorite players for the Red Sox. Played third base, Rico Petroselli. Rico Petroselli, 
Um, can't say that I even can recollect Ray Crop Cup, but there he is. And then again, one of my favorite pitchers for the Red Sox growing up, used to love to watch Louis Tiant pitch with that big giant overhead butterfly sweeping curveball that made people look ridiculous. They couldn't have been coming in it. They had a gun on him back then. He may have been throwing 58 to 61 mile an hour with that big banana curveball. Uh, another pitcher I remember from my childhood, of course, Bob Stanley, pitched with the Red Sox. Picked up this. I actually got this kind of with something else that I'll show you later, but picked up this Clemens as well. Um, again, got this Mike Greenwell. Pretty cool. And got this Jed Lowry. Ginter with the with the relic on it. And Jed Lowry, of course, is with the A's. I don't know if he'll be with them anymore. but And with the A's, boy, this guy killed us. Why do all the players that we trade away come back and in big games just beat us up? I, I, I wouldn't like to know what Jed Lowry's batting average is against the Red Sox. I think it's probably like 480, 480. And then we got this Ryan Kalish, who was supposed to be the bomb, was one of them one of them prospects that everybody thought was going to do really well. And do you even know who Ryan Kalish is? So there you go. Those are my my Red Sox cards. Again, some great vintage cards in there that we picked up. And I'm going to move on to some other stuff that we got. I'm trying to get in here. We got some baseballs. Eh, probably save save that one to last. We got three of these pickups over here. Best of the bunch, picked up um, Stennis Eckersley Ball, Hall of Fame 2004, um, 60 bucks, can't beat that, can't beat that. And then this is a ball I picked up too, again, another Hall of Famer, um, Ferguson Jenkins. Um, picked this up for, I gave him uh, 15 bucks for the Fergie Jenkins Ball. Um, Pretty unique signature, Hall of Fame, 1991. Um, pretty cool ball. I actually had a Ferguson Jenkins ball. I gave it to uh, one of my son's high school teams that was doing a fundraiser. Um, they auctioned it off. Got nothing for it. Um, wish I had kept it for what they got for it. Um, but actually need him for my Hall of Fame uh, ink collection I'm doing for the Red Sox. So I got to pick that up for 15 bucks. Pretty cool. And then I don't have Mr. Clemens' autograph anywhere, so I got my first Roger Clemens on a baseball. Um, pretty jazzed to get that. I got that for 20 bucks. 20 bucks. So we got some pretty good deals. All those vintage cards, again, pretty good deal at a buck a card. And then we picked up some other stuff that I'm going to have to back up a little bit. These are pretty cool. I have no idea. I'm going to have to do some research on this. But, of course, this is Babe Ruth. It's a picture of Babe Ruth. And I'm going to swing in and show you this little stamp that's on here. So this is in 2000, and this stamp on here, of course, is Atlanta, Georgia. It's got a number on it. Um, 100 century team legend baseball. Got a stamp, uh, 33 cent stamp of Babe Ruth on there. So this is pretty cool. The guy had a whole set of these, and I did pick up because they're really, really cool pictures. And those will get framed, of course, and then they'll go up, up on the wall. And here's another, another Babe Ruth I picked up. Um, of course, it has that same same marking on it. So this is a set that was produced um, in Atlanta, Georgia, probably for some show. I'll do a little research on it, try and find out what it is. But jazz to get ten bucks a piece, ten bucks a piece. So, and the creme de la creme. Wah! I'm gonna have to show you this. This is this is this is too cool. So I saw this hanging on his wall when he was showing me some other stuff, and I and I asked him, hey, is that for sale? So. Of course, here we have this. It's an art piece. It's a pencil art drawing that was done um, by James Alamore in 1990 is when this was produced. And of course, here we have uh, Ted Williams' autograph hand signed on this. Um, we've got uh, Bobby Doerr up here. We've got Dom DiMaggio, the brother of the great Don DiMaggio with the Yankees. We've got Johnny Pesky over in this corner. And then we've got uh, Eddie Pellegrin over here in this corner. So this is this is pretty cool. We got five autographs on here. It's got the uh, PSA certification with it. Um, I am stoked to get this. Really stoked to get this. I um, felt like I got a decent deal on it. We went and looked it up. You no know, going in there. I didn't know if he would sell it or not. But we looked it up and it ranged again unframed and in kind of poor condition. Was three hundred dollars. Um, good, really good condition. And this one is excellent. The, the autos on it are just pristine. 
That's the best. I've got another Ted Williams auto up here behind me on this poster. And this, this Ted Williams auto, you can see he really was working it fast when he was signing this. The W is actually small, so you got a big Ted, little W. You know, it's, it's Ted Williams, but um, the one on this one is just perfect. All of the autos on there are perfect. Dom DiMaggio's auto is perfect, so I'm really happy to get that. Went middle of the road. He kind of met me in the middle. Uh, we picked it up for 500 bucks, so really happy to get that for that price. I'm really jazzed. We had an excellent trip. The guy's got a ton of stuff. He bought out a collection and uh, got a ton of stuff. Uh, probably um, I'll post some of the stuff that he's trying to sell. Um, we'll probably go back. Um, he kind of just dug out what he thought I would be interested in as a Red Sox guy. Um, he's got a lot of Texas Rangers stuff, so we'll probably go back another time and look at his Texas Rangers stuff and see what we can pull up. Video's getting a little long. I just wanted to share this with you. Um, again, if, if any of the cards, any of the vintage cards, if you have any interest in them, um, other, you're not going to get my Red Sox cards, but uh, all the other cards. If you have any interest in them, comment below, and, and maybe we can work something out. I don't have a whole lot in them. Not looking to get a whole lot out of them, but if you need them for your collection, it's something you want to have for your PC, um, just give me, a, give me a line and we'll work something out with them. Um, well, there you have it. It was a great, great Saturday. Kind of went up with my wife. We went and saw a bunch of antique shops, kind of bounced around a few towns, had a great day, and ended up with a great meal and a... We ribeye steak and meal, both of us for $32 out the door. Great steak, great meal. That's the way to cap a day. So we're done. Uh, if you like the video, like. If you are not a subscriber, you want to subscribe, subscribe down below. Um, enjoying everybody getting on here. And again, as we finish this up, I, I've got to do something. You, no one, no one shot a video in for my 20th. Uh, subscriber giveaway I had a giant stack of cards so I'm gonna have to do something else I'm gonna think on it a little bit and see I guess I pushed my YouTube community too far asking for videos to come back so maybe we'll try something a little different and, and see what we come up with um, for that but anyways uh, thank you for watching appreciate all the love in the community and we're out of here later dude